If you caught our last video game history video, we touched on Ramtech, a manufacturer of imaging hardware like early CAT scanners and NASA's Viking 2 cameras, and how they got into coin-op video games as a way to bootstrap their larger and more serious projects. The company was founded in 1971 by electrical engineers Charles McEwen. At the time, he'd been working for Data Disk Corporation in San Jose, and he'd come to the conclusion that the future of medical imaging hardware was color graphics. His employer didn't quite see it the same way, so he left to form his own manufacturer with his brother Mel and some of the other aerospace engineers. While not a game company, Ramtech was, as we went over in the prior video, one of the first outside firms to get a look at Pong. Ramtech's VP of Finance was a part owner in Andy Capp's Tavern, where Atari was doing their field testing, and the engineers would frequently visit on their lunch breaks. Charles McEwen maintains that unlike most of the other companies that would get in on the Pong fad, Ramtech didn't disassemble and reverse engineer Pong to create their clone, Volley. Instead, they designed it from the ground up. And, unlike most of the other manufacturers, Ramtech had zero experience in the coin-op industry. Instead, they basically had to learn as they went. Accordingly, after Volley, they continued to innovate. Not new types of game as Atari was trying and failing, which we'll talk about in our next video, but new spins on the ball and paddle formula. In 1974, they released Wipeout. Similar to Atari's Elimination, it was a last player standing paddle game where you had to defend your goal against the other players or be eliminated. Wipeout, however, added what they called a frustration bumper in the middle of the screen, which, if hit, would send the ball careening off in an unexpected direction. It sold well on its own, and Ramtech also licensed it to Midway, who produced their own version as leader. Shortly after releasing Wipeout, Ramtech hired Air Force engineer Howell Ivey, a specialist working with CCTV and telemetry systems. Ivey came to them. After playing computer space, he decided he could make games himself, and created a Pong game whose paddle could move in four different directions. While Ramtech never put it into production, they agreed to buy the rights to it from Ivy for $2,000, or over $11,000 in 2021 dollars. More importantly, they offered him a job and the freedom to make whatever games he wanted. Ivy accepted, working on game projects at night while continuing his career in the Air Force during the day. Howell Ivy's first project for Ramtech was Clean Sweep, one of the company's biggest hits. It was a ball and paddle game with a pinball-like twist featuring a field of dots the player had to collect in order to win. This was a single-player game, one of the first created and implemented two other major main innovations. First, it was one of the first games to incorporate read-only memory to store paddle graphics more complex than the usual single bar. Secondly, it used RAM to keep track of the dots. Clean Sweep sold 3,500 units, earning Ivy enough that he could afford to leave the Air Force to work for Ramtech full-time. Ivy's next project was Baseball, adapting the old electromechanical bat games to the new ball and paddle genre. It featured both multiple types of pitch and some of gaming's first human characters in the form of controllable fielders. The form factor was also new. It was released in a low cabinet designed to give players the feeling that they were looking down into a baseball stadium. Baseball was one of the most complex games released to date, requiring two circuit boards. Like the earlier Wipeout, it was also licensed to Midway, who called their version Ballpark. Midway licensed a third title from Ramtech at about this time, TV Flipper, a pinball-inspired game with a grid of 5 by 4 targets on the screen and more along the sides, though Ramtech declined to put this one into production themselves. Ramtech's first non-ball game was called Trivia, a multiple-choice game whose questions were encoded on swappable 8-track cartridges. They followed this up with Hit Me, one of the first blackjack games, Sea Battle in 1976, a multiplayer game of ship-to-ship -ship combat, and Barricade, a clone of Gremlin's hit Blockade forced out of production by a trademark infringement lawsuit. 1977 saw the release of a space combat game called Star Cruiser, a dueling game like the original computer space, except that it used driving game style controls with a wheel and paddles, and M79 Ambush, a shooter that incorporated a controller based on the Army's grenade launcher of the same name. By 1978, however, the video game market was going through its first bust cycle due to a flooded Pong market and made worse by increased competition and blatant copying. 
Ramtech abandoned the video game market to focus on old-style electric mechanical games with a modern twist, the microprocessor. The first of these solid-state games was Dark Invader, a space-themed shooter that used lasers and mirrors, pitting the players against enemy ships made out of high-speed spinning wires, and GT Roadster, a projection screen driving game that used Super 8mm film. Their last game project was 1979's Boom Ball, a twist on Ski Ball that had players shooting the balls out of cannons. Despite the general success of these games, Ramtech's games divisions continued to bleed money, and in 1979 it was sold to the division's manager, Ramtech's co-founder Mel McEwen, who founded Meltech to continue producing Boomball. Ramtech, meanwhile, focused on continuing the production of medical imaging hardware, CAD machines, and PC monitors for the burgeoning home computer market. And that's the story of Ramtech. If you enjoy these peeks into video game history and you'd like to help me make more, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and with enough support I'll be able to afford to make twice as many videos. Thank you for watching.